Hey guys, it's Spacey Sims, and we are back with more Virtue Evermore. Continuing. Well, the common route still. So anyway, we just technically met Mathis. I mean, we as the players saw him previously, but our character just met him. And now we've seen Cyan, but we haven't met him. When are we going to meet him? Come on. Anyway, as Mathis continued to collect whatever materials he intended on sharing with us, we were given permission to wander freely around the grand house. Jean even offered us use of the billiard room to pass the time, but... Okay, this is what I love, though. A little electric car! <laughs> I guess I'm thinking of, like, electric cars like we have now. Like, I plug my car into the wall, not like... You know what I mean? Like, I guess I'm like, wait, we have electric... Well, like, look, that's actually just a normal fucking car. Like, where is that plugged in? I don't see a plug. I don't see electricity plugging that shit in. But you know what I mean? That's when they're talking about, like, it's like a horseless car. That's a little old-fashioned. That looks like a 1940s car, too. That's like the first car off the Ford factory lines, all right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's so funny. Uh, were they thinking about that? When they say, but when you say, like, an electric car, oh, goddamn, no. Let's cross this update. No, fuck off. Remind me tomorrow. Don't fucking ever remind me again. I don't need you updating tablet. Actually, since you are connected to that, sure, but, like, not right now. It's always inconvenient because I'm always using my guides and it's what's going to happen is I'm not going to record tomorrow because it's Saturday. So what don't record on Saturdays because I got to do my sim stuff and it'll update itself by the time I open it up on Monday. Anyway, anyway, I just think that's funny because that's not what I think of when I think of an electric car. You know I mean? uh, as I wasn't interested in playing, I quietly decided to walk outside. I'm sorry, I moved and almost knocked my poor bird over. He's jammed under my neck again. It seemed that Eve had the same thought. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about us. You guys continue the night patrol. But if you do encounter anyone suspicious, don't approach them. And just make sure to inform me or Adolfe. But we'll let you know if we find anything. I'll talk to you later. Are you on a cell phone? Do we have cell phones? He powered off a small device in his hand before placing it in his pocket. Okay. Because that's what I was wondering. I'm like, we got electric things, but we don't have phones. We got to write letters. But no, I guess we have communication devices. Whatever they are. Hey, Spacey. Out to get some fresh air, too. He called out my name and walked toward me. I've read that in the most awkward way. Y yes, just taking a break. I'm sorry. I overheard your conversation. Were you on your transmitter with members of the Corps? Again, like, I mean... It's a fantasy society. Of course, they can have modern technology. I mean, they can bring people back to life. But again, I just find it very funny. That's an electric car. It's not what I think of. And then you have transmitters, not cell phones. Because <laughs> if you think about it, a transmitter could be any type of tech. It could be futuristic, sciencey technology, as opposed to it's a cell phone. And then there's cell tower. You know what I mean? Where you're like, you understand kind of how cell phones work. But if it's a transmitter... That could mean anything, you know, in your fantasy world. <laughs> like, so funny. It's funny how certain words, like, are, like, like, transmitter. It's just so generic. It could literally mean anything, you know? But again, phone or cell phone has a meaning that you, if they were like, well, no, no, no. But in the future, you're like, that does not how it works. That's not how cell phones work. You know what I mean? <laughs> no fucking bonk. I don't know why I'm thinking about this. Anyway. Transmitter, a device owned by a select few in Cernival and Cheetahs. This device enables people to speak to others from great distances. Basically, that's all. I mean, in Cohen, only the core have these devices for use in their work, because we too poor. Yep. Adolfe asked me to send a report back to them, since I was stepping outside anyway. It's easier to connect this way. Oh my god, it's literally like a Bluetooth earpiece. That's actually kind of cool. It's not like, I'm thinking like, okay, it's probably like a, you know, you think about the way like communicators were in Star Trek or whatever, you know what I mean? But like, I like the fact that they went with the, it's kind of like, just like an actual, like, it's a little earpiece open oh, then it's got a little mic on it. So it's, 
It's like super pretty common technology now. You know what I mean? This is my first time seeing one. Transmitter was a device used to communicate with someone far away. I like how we have to have a glossary term that they're then just going to explain to us. I heard that they flash different colors depending on whose device was on the receiving end. That's interesting. <laughs> it came out so bad. <laughs> Hello. And these transmitters are only supplied to the core and Cohen. I had some trouble figuring out how to use it. I see. I recalled Adolfe saying he received one from the Institute, somewhat against his will. It could be that he wasn't too happy to get one back when... It could be that he wasn't too happy to get one back then because, like Eve, he didn't know how to use it. A cool breeze blew between us. When it passed, Eve began to speak again. I wanted to thank you again for your help earlier. I'm grateful that you spoke those kind words to the woman we met. If she had to deal with us men comforting her after what happened with the Royal Guard, it might have meant very little. He, and that's what I was talking about. Like, he's, like, pretty intuitive. Like, yeah, me saying that she's wonderful and beautiful isn't going to mean shit, but another woman saying it's different, you know? Oh. But I was just saying what I felt since you asked me. It looked like she was very conscious about her appearance. I could tell how much effort she put into the makeup she wore and the way she styled her hair. I can't help but respect her for living her life with a difficult job like that. I see. So this really is you. Like, what now? What do you mean by that, bitch? I'm just kidding. I mean, how kind you are. I have the tendency to look down on yourself, but... You're able to see the good in others and look up to them without any negative judgment. Oof, that you have a great personality. I can see why Adolfi cares about you and treats you like his own little sister. Yeah, I'm like guessing his ratty ain't gonna be treating us like a little sister. Well, maybe. You know. Listen, game, you're trying to call, like, listen. Oh, Adolfi's like your big brother, and you're like his little sister. You think that's gonna turn me off? Wrong. Wrong, wrong. We know for a fact now from other games that we play. Listen. Listen. I spent enough time playing these games and going, yeah, tempt me with the brother route. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, bring it on. Make, let me bang my brother. And the game never lets you bang your brother. It's like, it's your brother, but it's not really your brother at all. You're not even step-siblings, not at all, no genetic relation, and you're like, cowards. And then a game finally came along and let us bang our brother. And you know what? I was not disturbed at all. Which is a shock for me, because, you know, I was like, I, I feel like I'm going to say this. Like, come on, game. Let me bang my brother. And then someday the game was going to let me bang my brother, and I was going to be like, why did I ask for this? But no. Mm -mm. You tried, game, and it... No. I'm into it. Apparently. Not in real life, but I don't have a real brother, so I mean... I feel like if I had a real brother, it might be weirder, but I don't, so like... It doesn't weird me out. Because I don't have one, so I can't be like... Ugh. But I'm old, so when they're like, this minor, this child... Okay, that's grossing me out, okay? I'm too old. I don't need to be on that watch list. I... Put me on the one where, like, incest watch list. Sure, whatever. Because I don't have a brother to have sex with, so it's okay. That sounds like I would actually sleep with a real brother. That's disgusting. <laughs> like, it's an Atome game. I can get around the family relations in the very beginning, as we know. I was like, oh, my God, I got to date my cousin. That's so wrong. And now I'm like totally fine with banging my brother. In this case, Adolfo and I aren't related. But they're trying to squick you out with the whole brother-sister. You're like brother and sister. Yeah, but we aren't. And that's not going to stop me. Because I can't read. But the whole, like, look, he's so innocent and young and he looks like a child. I would have thought he was, like, 14 years old. Okay, that's disgusting. Stop it. Stop it. No. Ro no. That's a line I have yet to not be disgusted by, personally. You want me Or the I'm 18 and the dude's 40. That's wrong and weird. I have a problem with huge age differences. In real life, like, do whatever. Like, yeah, I'm probably going to look at you weird if you're 18 and you're dating a 40-year-old. It's like, why is the 40-year-old dating an 18-year-old? That's a little wrong. But, like, if you're 20 and they're 40, 20 and they're sick, whatever. I mean, that's your choice. Might seem a little strange, but it's not me. But when the game is forcing me to... No, that's what I don't like. <laughs> you're making me play this, and I don't like that. You're putting me in this situation. I don't like it. Anyway. So, Yeah. You're not going to get me on that one game. Make me feel all weird about the fact that we're going to date a dolphin. He's like my brother. Nah. No. 
Thank God we're doing math this first. Let's get this out of the way. Eve smiled cheerfully and... <gasps> oh my God. Oh, see, and now they gave him saucer eyes just to fuck with me. Look at this cute little CG. Oh, I kind of like our little, like, top thing. It's like, um... <sighs> not a shrug. That's not the word I'm looking for. Whatever. But anyway, I like it. They are a very kind person. I'd like to get to know you better. They make him in the CG, though, like, look so sweet and innocent and baby-faced. They're like, let's make him look half his age. Stop it. Rude. Let's know if you don't mind. Can we be friends? My hand was still at, still at the warmth of his touch. I mean, I like the fact that he's holding my hand. Most people feared getting too close to me. Yet without any fear at all, he naturally took my hand. I kind of forgot about that whole thing, too. Glad it reminded me. She's like, he took my hand. And it was like, oh, and he's like, I'm surprised he wasn't afraid he was going to die. Ah, uh, right, I forgot. It reminded me of the night I saw him touch the licorice flower so gently. Friends? Eve, are you really sure? Hmm? If you mean whether I'm sure I want to get to know you better, then yes. That's not it. I mean, the Reaper's Curse. You've heard the rumors about me, right? Even if he hadn't, he experienced my curse firsthand. I was thinking that. I'm like, did you forget? There's no reason for him to be this kind. I wouldn't blame him if he held a grudge. On top of all that, my curse... Oh, my curse was what almost killed you last night. It was pure luck that Adolphe was able to bring you back to life. Hmm. <laughs> that sounds like an interesting story when you put it like that. After all, there's no proof that you caused the explosion last night. Even if that were the case... It doesn't bother me one bit. So what if you did? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Eve continued in a calm voice as I stood there in shock. Human or not, a death or not, it's clear to me that you're struggling hard to live a good life. And that means you're no different from any other person. Someone that I can love. Eve continued, I mean, sir, we're not in your route yet. I need you to simmer down a little. No matter who may hate you, I can say without a doubt that I love you. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What's happening here? I, I don't want to complain, but um, are you? Should you be? Should I? I, but uh, what? <laughs> I. I was gonna at the first part when he's like someone I could love. I was like. You know, I would be like, excuse me, is there... Uh, exactly what I said. But in my the back of my mind, I was like, maybe you just mean, like, someone that you, like, that you love like a friend. You love your friends. You love your family. The people that you care about. You know what I mean? That kind of love. Not, like, in love with. And then you throw this out, and now I'm very confused. And what now? <laughs> like, it's just silence. <laughs> Still. Um. Can you say love? Yeah, right? Girl, you, me, both. Same. Words that should have been spoken to someone special in his life were spoken to me in such a casual way. <sighs> should have taken a breath before I read that sentence. Rather than guilt, what I felt most of all was confusion. But from the tone of his voice, it probably doesn't have a deeper meaning. Still, I felt he should watch what he said, especially since he was so handsome. <laughs> right? Like, sir, you're too hot to be telling me you love me without me getting the wrong idea. His words may cause a misunderstanding, depend depending on who he said that to. After a moment, Eve looked down somewhat apologetically. It's so funny, because you know damn well in his route we're going to be like, Well, when you said you loved uh, loved me, right? I mean, I knew you were just meeting like a pal or a friend, but like, you really should be careful about that. He's like, no, I straight up meant I'm in love with you. I figured you knew that. It's, that's exactly what's going to happen. You know it. I know you feel bad about where I'm wearing this mask over my face. So I shouldn't have said what I did earlier out of nowhere. I'm sorry if it made you recall bad memories. No, not at all. Which is why I won't talk about that incident incident anymore. And you don't have to worry about what happened. But I can't do that. 
I need to apologize to you for what happened back then, Eve. There was no way that I couldn't. If there's something to be gained by looking back at the past, it's fine. But it's no good if it only ends up hurting you. <clears throat> How about we save it for another day? Let me both have the courage to face it. Instead, I want to know more about the kind of girl you are now. I'll also do my best to show you what kind of person I am now, whether in word or deed. For that to happen, Spacey, will you please be my friend? It's like a friend proposal. It's a friend posal. <gasps> I love it. Eve's smile was pure and sincere, without any sense of ill will. In response to his honest request, um, I feel like yes would be more pushing you in his, although this is just the common route. Well, yeah, and when you common route save file three, eh, I'm looking at the guy. I don't. I haven't pulled up to where the I want to help her from, but like save file three is where you start. Save file one is where we. I mean, obviously we've already saved, so that'll lead us to a bad ending. We haven't done two, so I can't imagine why this answer would be different. Like either way, it's not like oh that'll push us to him because then we, this, that would have been after save file three, you know what I mean? So I would assume yes. You know what I mean? I would have figured yes would give us points to him, but common route, not at the, where we would open to split off routes. So these answers should be generic across the board. So, oh, interesting. Okay. No, we just don't answer him. All right. Curious, curious. Do I really have the right to be your friend, Eve? Okay. All right. I was like, instead of, yeah. It's like, d can I? All right. Okay. I see that difference now. <laughs> Who gets to make that call? If it were up to me, I'd say you do. Eve's friendly voice was melting away the fear and guilt in my heart. Okay. I like that better. Because like, I, I was thinking, I mean, that's the problem sometimes with choices. It's like, don't answer or say yes. Like, you want to say yes. But, like, I'm going to guess we're going to get to yes, and we would have just missed these couple of lines if we had straight up said yes. You know what I mean? So this gives you a little extra content. Plus, I get based on what we said, like, do I have that right? Can I make that choice? That's a little more her-like than, okay, so, okay, okay, okay. Before I knew it, I naturally reached out to give him a handshake. I'm glad you took my hand. Looking forward to getting to know you. Right. You too, Eve. Since we're friends now, feel free to treat me like one. And don't hesitate to be yourself with me. I'm wondering if when you do the save file one bad ending, if you choose the opposite. Uh, okay, then I will. Good. Well, what should we do now, Spacey? I think we should kiss. It seemed to ignite a spark in him. What, not yet? Too too soon? Come on. Come on. Look, we're gonna manhare him this whole fucking thing. We should just make out while we can. The brightness that grew inside Eve came forth and lit up his smile. Bye, CG. In the end, I couldn't confirm, let alone apologize, for what happened seven years ago. I was grateful that he said we didn't have to talk about what happened, but my feelings of relief made me feel ashamed. Only my heart was strong enough to face that nightmare. One day, I'll apologize for what happened and thank him for what he's done for me. Still, I wonder what he meant when he used the word love. Yeah, right? He's the same mysterious person as the one I saw in the field of Lycoris. I headed back inside while Eve stayed to enjoy the breeze a while longer. Uh... <laughs> Startled. He's got pretty green eyes, though. Just as he was hurrying from his study, a stack of papers and books that Mathis brought downstairs fell from his arms and scattered all across the floor. Uh, I, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry if I startled you. Here, let me help you pick these up. Sorry, bird, but your toenails are awful. You can snug with my net, but you're just, you're shoving yourself, like I have a Henley kind of top on, you know, with the little buttons on the top, and so, like, he's shoving himself under my shirt, and it's like, 
But he's not going under my shirt. He's just, like, shoving it out of the way so he can claw my skin. I know you're not doing it on purpose, but it hurts. Anyway. I crouched down to the floor, making an attempt to stack them in some semblance of order. As I did, I caught some interesting tidbits from what he had prepared. So these are the materials he wanted to share with us about Boreo. These notes are about how many bodies were found and where, including what they were doing at the time. I pulled my shirt up so it would be like up to my fucking esophagus. And what does he do? He gets and he adjusts and he kicks it out of the way. And now his toes are digging into my fucking skin again. Such an asshole. Ugh. Wait, did I read that? About bodies were found where, including what they were doing at the time of death. Okay. There are even details about the victim's families here. I was surprised by his thoroughness. But I haven't noticed any autopsy reports yet. I wonder if it's because the bodies were recovered by the Royal Guard. Uh, um... Mathis glanced at me as, as he continued picking up the papers from the floor. Did, did you find anything wrong with my notes? If so, I I'll fix them right away. Oh, no, actually the opposite. I was just amazed at how you were able to gather so much information by yourself. I see you, inching. Don't you bite my headset. The content's very organized. It's easy to read, even for a novice like me. Don't chew the headset. Not nice. If you chew the microphone, everybody's gonna hear a loud blonking. You're not gonna like it. What? What a relief. And no one's ever read my writings except for Jean, so that's a relief. He finally smiled. Such a beautiful, cute smile, but I mean, I really do like this version of his sprite. Like, if he stayed like this, I could handle it. I can't, I can tell he's still scared of talking to other people. Because he looks sweet and innocent, but he's still beautiful, you know what I mean? Like, this balances it out, and I'm like, okay. It might be his natural temperament, but I wonder if something happened in his past. As I thought quietly to myself, Oh, um, Spacey, was it? Surprisingly, Mathis was actually trying to continue the conversation. I, I heard that we're about the same age. May I ask how old you are? Oh, um, I'm 18 years old. Human. Same age as Eve. Okay, that is bullshit because in the earlier said so we were almost 20. I guess what they meant by that was 18 is close to 20. But to me, when you say you're almost 20, that means we're 19 on the border of being 20. That's what they fucking said. I'm not crazy. I guess in the contents of the, the curse, they meant, and somebody might have mentioned this, like, in the comments. But again, none of this has gone up yet. <laughs> like, the, you're almost 20 when the curse is going to kick in. I'm two years from it. Okay? But, like, that's, I feel like it should have been, you're going to be 20 in a couple years. Like, you're close to being 20. You're only a year, you're only two years from 20. Like, I feel like they could have worded that in a better way. Than the way they did, because that construes that you're almost 20. Like, almost 20 means, like, I'm over, I've got less than six months to go before I'm 20. Not, I got over a year and a half, or over a year. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not even 19. That's, that's not almost 20. You know what I mean? Don't tell a baby, well, it's almost time for retirement. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> so, like, I don't know. Anyway... That was just their poor choice of wording. And I guess for the curse, like you're almost, you're getting close to the age where the curse is going to kick in. But like, I, I just don't think that needed to be worded that way for that purpose. Because that's what, that wasn't what we were talking about. I don't think, but anyway, whatever. Uh, so, so you're only a year older than I am, but you're so much more mature. R really? Mathis nodded a few times with some degree of anguish. I, I knew it. It must be from your experience in socializing with others. So much is said about the Corps, but I had no idea that they actually had a woman in their ranks. You're only a year older than me and already have an important job. And that's amazing. Oh. I was stunned by the realization. What does that sound? This was how someone would see me if they didn't know that I was deaf. My heart ached a bit at the thought that I had deceived him. I decided to tell him the truth. I'm sorry, Monsieur Claude. I'm actually not with the Corps at all. I 
I gathered my courage and expressed that I was the person known as Death. Upon hearing my confession, Mathis's face suddenly turned pale. <laughs> he certainly looked spooked. Once again, the materials in his arms fell to the floor as he scrambled against the wall. I shouldn't be surprised by his reaction. I knew this would happen, but <clears throat> it was still disheartening to see it after our conversation just a moment ago. Oh, um, uh, I I'm sorry. I sort of overreacted. Mathis stared at me as he gathered the papers from the floor again. I must admit I was frightened to hear it, but if I may be frank, as long as we can track down Boreo, it doesn't matter. His fright was expected, but it was his acceptance of my identity that startled me. As if to hide his fear, Mathis gave a nervous laugh. To be fair, like, oh, he's afraid of me now. He's afraid of the wall, okay? He's afraid of everything, so... I... I... I've never thought of myself as a sinner before now, but... My sole purpose in life is seeking vengeance against Boreo for killing my brother. So, um, you're going to kill me. Please do it after that. What? He's not much older than I am, but he's so determined to see this through. <laughs> She's like, what? You're so determined on vengeance. Girl, did you not catch that he was like, please don't kill me to laughter? Like, that's not how it works. He was carrying the burden of revenge on his shoulders against someone he didn't know. And he gave his life no other meaning. Instead, I want to know more about the kind of girl you are now. I remember what Eve said to me. It was literally two minutes ago. Uh, that's right. I was always looking down on myself. I've never let anyone besides Adolfi get close to me or learn more about me. I introduced myself to Mathis as death, but I didn't say what that meant exactly. What's up, death? My lazy approach toward my own existence led him to say such a sad thing. As I internally reprimanded myself, I steadied my breathing before speaking again. Well, sure, Claude, I... I don't have any special ability to kill people like you want me... Like what you might be imagining. Huh? Well, what I'm trying to say is... I have no intention of causing people's deaths, so please don't worry. Hear how strange my explanation sounded as I was saying it. And this was the best that I could manage for now. If... If I still scare you in some way... Please let me know and I'll leave right away. Uh, maybe it's for the best if I head back to the orphanage. I forced out the best smile I could and quickly turned to leave when... Wait! Ow! I felt a sharp pain on my arm where he grabbed it suddenly. It's getting dark, so you shouldn't walk alone outside. Outside alone. Sorry. You never go outside by yourself. I felt the pressure run down my arm as Mathis shouted. You can hear him squeezing. It hurts. Understood. I'll stay here until the others are ready. So if you could, please let go of my arm a little. Uh, I I'm sorry. I, I just panicked. I, I shouldn't have touched a girl without permission. I, I apologize for my rudeness. It's fine. I guess I was surprised too. I gently rubbed my arm once he like, let it go. Despite his frail appearance, Mathis seemed to possess a great deal of physical strength. Probably doesn't even realize it. Now that I'm looking more closely, there's a knife strapped to his thigh. Is there? I will see it. Maybe he's training to avenge his brother. As I thought about it, Mathis looked like he was regretting what he said earlier. I, I won't be forcing you out of my house. Not now. Not ever. I promise. Never do anything to isolate a person. No matter who it is. That was what my brother told me when I was little. And I don't like being lonely either. He looked down apologetically. I didn't do anything wrong. Sorry for the strange way I reacted earlier. I I'll never do that again. So please, can we go after Boreo together? He's like, actually having death on my side might be helpful. As Mathis looked up, to looked up at me anxiously, I could tell from his eyes that his request was sincere. Yes, as long as you're okay with me. Are you blushing? Are you blushing, Cupcake? Uh, she is. I breathed a sigh. What's going on? 
can't believe I'm getting to know so many kind and caring people all at once. I know! Seems like the game's ready to set up a bamboozle, like you got to know everyone and now they're all dead. Happiness I was experiencing was more than death could ask for. That's the game being like, <laughs> Wait. Rude. That is literally what I was saying. That ga The game is literally like, you feel that false sense of security? You're making all these friends, getting to know people. You're feeling happy, right? Yeah, no. You Go fuck yourself. It's so gonna slap us in the face. After everyone reviewed the records that Mathis had painstakingly put together, we came to the conclusion that Boreo had a pattern of targeting the rich. If so, then the wealthy merchants selling their wares at the Marche, or Marsh, in Cohen were most at risk. Adolphe used his transmitter to alert the other members of the Corps waiting at the base. Before long, the sun had completely set. Oh, um, if you don't mind, I'd like to invite everyone to stay the night. We decided to accept his generous offer and remain here for the night. Hope somebody called Sister Salome and let her know. Ooh, who's other this time? As etiquette demanded, Spacey was given a room to herself, so it did not take long for her to fall asleep. It was three o'clock in the morning. As only two people inhabited the mansion, the other rooms were not very well kept. As such, the members of the Corps who shared a guest room struck up a conversation. We haven't stayed out like this since after the last night patrol. What, we were drinking at Adolphe's? Kind of exciting, isn't it? Do you guys want to have a pillow fight? It'll be like we're kids again. It's fucking adorable. If you get a pillow fight, it'd be so much fun. Hell no. Break one thing here and it'll cost us a fortune. And by the way, isn't one of your ribs broken? How can you still have it in you to suggest that? Even if it's broken, it's more uncomfortable than painful. Plus, I still got more. And that's why they're called- that's why they call them spare ribs, you know? Fucking crazy. I love him. We're not supposed to break through all the ribs we've got, you idiot! <laughs> hey, we're not kids anymore. Hurry up and get to sleep. And don't they grumble nearby. He then turned over with his back to Eve and Hugo, his expression hidden under his blanket. Eve... What do you think about Spacey? You already know, right? The question echoed in the silence. Even as they settled down for the night, Eve still wore the mask on his face. Hugo, who was kicking Eve's legs to annoy him, suddenly stopped moving for a moment. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Eve's over there like, we should have a pillow fight. Hugo's like, what the fuck? He's like, ah, my rib is fine, whatever. And he's over there kicking him in the legs like, eh, eh. Like he's fucking 12. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. As for Eve, it seemed he had no intention of asking why the question was directed at him. Well, you think she's a nice girl, just like you've said. And unlike me, she's very pretty. Unlike me, are you, sir, have you seen yourself in the mirror? I know you have a mask on because you have scars from the birds, whatever, but, like, you are gorgeous. I'm sure she'll smile and be loved by others, but once the misunderstanding about her being deaf is cleared up, hopefully I can help her with that as her friend. Oh, I was like, what's happening? Oh. There was, like, a, I could hear a car in the distance and it was with the music, and I was like, what kind of music is going No, it's just the happy piano music. Eve gave a carefree response, despite the cautious silence between the other two. I see. That is very like you. You say and think the most incomprehensible things sometimes, but your compassion's as reassuring as always. I'm thinking, okay, so Eve looks like he'd be soft and delicate, but he sound, but like, he also sounds like he might be a little crazy. Clearly. I'm soft and gentle and compassionate, but I'm a little nuts! So maybe the Irish accent works for him. Well, whatever this accent is. In response to Adolphe's statement, So that's why... Hugo mumbled quietly before moving his blanket and sitting up. Hugo, how long is it? Can't sleep. I'm gonna get some fresh air. You just take it easy. Ooh. Hugo walked out into the night air, feeling something indescribable. Eve was asked about his past with Spacey in that roundabout way. His quick response echoed in Hugo's head. 
He felt no grudge against her. Knowing him, he probably didn't concern himself with what happened. Damn it, this is so frustrating. Oh, Hugo, are you having second thoughts about us? No matter how much he thought about it. Such an idiot. Not like I'm his mother or anything. No, but like... You're like his bestie, I guess. Maybe his secret side piece boyfriend. Listen. Listen, I'm okay with it. If he's fine with what happened, then I have no right to say otherwise. Hugo spoke aloud to himself, then turned around to head back inside when... Uh... Hmm? He encountered Mathis, who seemed to be outside for the same reason. He wasn't dressed for bed because he wasn't planning on sleeping anytime soon. Hugo's not dressed for bed either, but then again, they didn't, we didn't bring pajamas, so... What are you doing out here? It should be bedtime for a kid like you. He's 17, Jesus. I, I'm not a kid. There's only a year's difference between me and Eve. Oh, that's so. Tell me again once you've gone out into the real world to make a living. Hugo, this kid doesn't have to do jack shit. He's rich as fuck. Hugo rubbed Mathis' head, messing up his hair, at which point Mathis gave a dissatisfied frown. <laughs> sorry. Hugo, that's such a douche move, but it's so funny. I love it. I'm sorry. Oh, God. Seeing his expression, Hugo's perception of the stammering young man from this afternoon changed slightly. It all get dark. Never took you for the short-tempered type. You get that from your brother. John often tells me that I look like him. Oh? From my view, you actually remind me of my younger sisters. My family became relivers, so they lost their cuteness, but I vaguely recall that they acted just like you. So, so you're a reliver too? Yeah, and you? Not me. I'm still human. He's 17 years old. Same as Jean. I feel like that dot 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 is like, I'm not a reliver, I'm the same. But there is no way Jean is 17 years old. As they continued their idle exchange, something drew near from above. I feel like he's trying to say, I'm not, I haven't, I'm not a reliver, I'm still human, whatever. But there's no way Jean is 17. Okay? There's just no way. Ooh, what's something from above is question marking. Ooh! Suddenly! <gasps> Silent blade flashed before their eyes. It swung downward. Shh! Sorry, bird. I scared my bird. You go! The sword he quickly pulled from his sheath pushed back the approaching blade. I was like, Mathis isn't going to die, but Hugo could. Hugo absolutely could! I feel like you shouldn't die this early. You should die in Eve's route if you're going to die at all, or later. Not right now! <gasps> He managed to deflect the full attack, sustaining only a gash that sent droplets of blood over the Claude family's garden. <laughs> Mathis' eyes fell upon the person whose shadow darkened the blood on the grass. You... The Boreal? Y you're... You're the... Along with memories of despair, the hatred hidden deep in his heart returned timid young man's personality slowly shifted into a different color. You were the one who killed my brother! That sounded a little more intense than I wanted to do shit. Mathis brandished the knife that he kept close for this very moment. At that, Hugo clicked his tongue as he too knew who the assailant was. Hey, hey! You've gotta be kidding! We just hit the jackpot! But of all times, let the killer had their sights set on Cohen. I'm wondering who this really is. Like, are we gonna... Is this a character? Like, okay, because they obviously have a sprite. You know what I'm saying? Right? If they're showing this. So... It's pro... I would guess... Unless it's Cyan, because he's not here. Because Hugo walked outside. 
I highly doubt that it could be Eve or Adolfe because they're in the room together. So like one just sneaking out and then coming in and then they're like, where will who? I thought he came out here with you. You know what I mean? That would be sus as fuck. Right? Science not here. I don't think it's Onko because he was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Too much death. I need to take a break. If people could stop, that'd be great. You know what I mean? So like, he's not the one doing it. We know that. Unless he's like, actually, I just wanted to leave you on a wild goose chase because I'm crazy. Possibly. But I feel like the suspicion's not on him right now because he wanted us to investigate. So, but like, it could also be Jean. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it could also be a character we haven't met yet. <gasps> it could be Sister Salome. It could be a woman. Look at that delicate wrist. You can't really say that for anything because all of her boys are a little delicate. So I'm just saying, I would guess... If it's not a complete other character, if it's a character that you're going to meet and interact with, it's going to be one of the ones with a sprite. So that means it could be a love interest, it could be a side character, it could be a character we haven't met yet, but... It, you know what I mean? If it's, like, the reason... You know what I mean? Like, sometimes, like, Boreo could just be, like, under the hood is a character we might, we've already met or will meet. You know, like, they're doing double duty. Like, they have, you know what I mean? She's crying. I don't know why I'm having to split. Okay, listen. It's because my brain is not processing fully. You know what I mean. Wait. The killer actually come to hit on us because we're the we're on the case? Always hitting on you. This was no time to be thinking. Hugo's priority was to protect Mathis, who lacked any real fighting prowess. But the young man but the young man in need of protection took an unexpected course of action. Uh, uh! That was fun. He decept his deceptively frail figure wielded the dagger in his hand and quickly lunged toward the assailant to strike. He might be frail and delicate, but he's pissed. Oh, hey, what are you doing, you idiot? I don't think Boreo's ever going to speak, because then you'd know the voice. <laughs> Boreo easily parried Mathis's foolhardy attempt to quickly and quickly followed with a sharp kick. Mathis! Hugo suddenly went pale. He knew he wouldn't make it in time. The young man was going to die with one more strike from Boreo. But the attack didn't happen. Instead, the killer quickly turned his weapon toward another target. Huh? Hugo's relief that Mathis was no longer the target opened him up for attack. Okay, what character stands like this? Did science stand like this? I'm just saying, that's a very quintessential pose, so keep that in mind. We haven't seen Cyan in a while, so I don't really remember, but now I'm like, somebody, somebody's gonna be standing like this with the little hand in the thing. So remember this little, like, pose. It's a very feminine pose, which is why I wouldn't put past Cyan to have that, but I'm just saying, remember this pose. He's already caught up to me. This monster... Monster was hardly an exaggeration. Hugo somehow blocked one blow after another, but... Strikes came so furiously that he couldn't determine exactly what type of weapon was being used against him. Out of the corner of his eye, Hugo noticed Mathis doing his best to stand up again. S stop Why are you going after him? I'm the one you need to face! Mathis tried to capture his attention, but... I keep saying his, but, like, you don't know. As if nothing had happened. Oreo disregarded his challenger. Huh? Mathis' surprise was only natural. Oreo, the cruel murderer who terrorized the wealthy, when faced with a direct taunt, turned his attention away from Mathis, the master of the estate. Instead, the killer's target had somehow become Hugo, who was fighting for his life. Maybe he likes a challenge and Mathis didn't give him a challenge. And think about, like, all the people in the alley. There were multiple people. That's a challenge. One man or woman. We don't know. But, like, one person against, like, four or five or six. You know what I mean? <sighs> At least he's not interested in Mathis. Yeah, but I'm really concerned for Hugo right now. The sounds outside were unmistakable. He 
Hugo! That didn't come out like Eve's voice, but whatever. If you don't want to die, duck! Oh, poor Hugo. Look, he's all beat up. <laughs> they just dropped his sprite. The door had slammed open with a kick. A large vase came hurtling out from inside the house. <laughs> it's amazing. It flew at a speed fast enough to kill if it struck the assailant's head, but it shattered It shattered at once with a swing of his blade. Even Adolphe ran out and swiftly took their place on each side of the injured Hugo. Like, Hugo? I gotta be honest. Hugo, you've done a damn good job holding up against this motherfucker, so like... This fucking bionic man. Hugo, are you okay? Not sure if I can say yes to that. So this is the Boreo we're looking for. Isn't it obvious? You can see how bloodshot Mathis's eyes are from here. Mathis glared, huffing and panting as he dragged himself to his knife intended for Boreo. Adolphe swiftly took action. We can't let him move around like that. Spacey! Jean! R right! Okay, so it's not anybody that's here at the time, is all I'm saying, because now we can see Jean in the same place. As the killer. This is intense, guys. Spacey, please take care of the master. Spacey and Jean moved quickly. Jean offered cover while supporting the injured Hugo with his shoulder. Spacey did her best to hold Mathis back so that he wouldn't move any closer. What are you doing? Let, let me go. My brother's killer is, is right in front of me. I know, but I'm sorry. Now's not the time. The executioner glanced over at the two and quickly vanished. His shadow followed at the speed of dark until both had gone from the garden. You're not getting away. Let's go, Eve. Right, Spacey. Please take care of Hugo and Mathis. Uh, okay. The two dashed off in pursuit of Boreo. Don't die. She prayed for their safe return and tried to somehow convince Mathis to go back inside, but... Uh, that was also very intense music, so I hope it wasn't too loud, because it was very... Like, I have my volume on my computer turned down, and my headset completely turned down. And I was like, that's intense. So. To be fair, I haven't checked any... I've spot-checked a couple. I'm like, it seems okay, but, like, there's times like this where it's very intense and I need to go back and see. And, like, but I think for the most part it's okay. I haven't fully checked any of them, so. Like, if it's really bad, just bear with me. It's gonna be, like hard for a while, because, like, none of these have gone up, you know what I mean? So. Uh. Mathis forced himself to his feet, making Spacey fall to the ground. This isn't over yet. He snatched the knife from the ground and ran from the garden after Eve. Master! But please wait, Mathis! He's like a runaway car! Jean, forget about me. Go get him before he winds up in more trouble. Uh, understood. The gate that Mathis had just gone through suddenly opened again, letting in a crowd of people. Hey, Claude, what in the world's going on? We saw some guys running out of here with weapons. You got a lot of explaining to do. The timing couldn't have been any worse. Sensing the commotion, the people quickly surrounded Jean. Jean? Spacey, I'm truly sorry. Please go after the master. There was no time to think. She was the only one who could move now. Understood. Spacey nodded in response to Jean's plea, determined to stop Mathis before he got to Boreo. She wove through the crowd, running out into the night streets of Cheetahs. This is intense, yo. I like it, though. I mean... Adolphe and Eve gave chase and finally cornered Boreo at a dead end. Again, okay, see how he stands. Oh. Oh, wait. You know who I didn't think about? Lucas. I didn't think about Lucas at all. I completely forgot. That is how Lucas stands, isn't it? Is Lucas the one that stands like that? Because you know what I just noticed? The fucking rosary looking shit going on on his hip there? There's a cross with the beads. It's like with the rosary effect. You know what I mean? But like, yeah. And who's a little boy of God? J 
do you think Lucas is... Well, I was going to say killing relivers, but Mathis and his brother aren't. And maybe all the people aren't. Do you think he's killing people before they could... Like, people before they can become relivers? For some reason? Like, there's some kind of weird... Do you think he knows he's doing it? Do you think he's got a split personality? Because, like, think about it. Pretty fucking sure he brought Eve back to life. So, like... Now I'm going to have to see next time Lucas shows up, but I'm pretty sure he stands like that. Now my brain is like, I think he stands like that. Oh, dear God. Are you serious? <laughs> I finally got you. This guy's not even out of breath yet. Because he's magic. He's got magic Jesus juice. And they pointed a sword at Boreo, it was clearly a force to be reckoned with. He's got Jesus on his side. I mean, I guess. I have a question for you. Are you the one behind that mass murder in Cohen? I kind of figured him. I was kind of thinking it was one of our love interests. I was like, did Adolfe do it? I think he's working with Cyan. Because like, oh my god. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well! Lucas is the second route, so... Huh. 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 Well, anyway, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. But I'm finding it interesting, so. I mean, and obviously, this is not a pose that anyone would have because... Very weird. I can't... I don't think it's from the game. It's bizarre. No one would, we wouldn't have this pose on whatever sprite, but I'm just saying that cross on you makes you sus. He quietly lifted up his weapon. I'm just going to be, uh, listen, I'm just going to say if it's like, I, I feel like it's going to be a character that we're going to meet, whether it's a love interest or not. But I really do think that standing pose with that, that seemed so fucking familiar to me that I'm like, that seems so. And maybe there's, I feel like they sh what they should have done, if that's like a giveaway, they should have had a couple characters that have that kind of pose. So that you'd be like, wait, 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 and you wouldn't know. Because I think that might be a giveaway, and I'm kind of like, I think it seems familiar, not because I can 100% place it in this game before. Although I'm starting to think that Lucas stands like that. So I'm concerned now. You know what I'm saying? But... I also, I mean, I think that's a pretty quintessential pose that they use in a lot of Atome games with the little, like, in behind the ear kind of pose. Like, that's a similar body pose. So I feel like we've seen that pose before in other games. But now I'm like, now next time Lucas shows up, I'm going to be eyeballing that motherfucker and seeing if his sprite stands like that, because... A halberd, huh? Oh, a halberd, huh? What a cumbersome thing to use. Albert, a long pull pulled weapon that looks like a spear with an axe blade at the top. If that's the same weapon that killed the civilians in the Royal Guard, then we've got an uphill battle ahead. One wrong move and we're dead. Keep your guard up, Eve. Ugh. I really don't like res I really don't like resorting to violence. Eve let out a sigh, pulling out a rapier that shone in the darkness. Now's not the time to be civil. I know. I said I don't like resorting to violence. Not that I won't use it. I love that. I don't like it. I didn't say I won't do it. If it were up to me, I'd rather ask him why he's doing this, but... It doesn't seem like he'd be willing to listen. I can understand that much. Yeah, because... If Borio escaped, more would undoubtedly die. He's gonna, though. Oh, I'll beat him to a pulp, tie him up, then confirm his identity and motives afterward. Eve turned his endearing smile to Boreo. Don't worry. I won't outright condemn you for what you've done. No matter the reason, it's kind of weird if it's actually Lucas, because Lucas just brought you back to life, and now you're going to have this battle to the death. Take my time. <clears throat> I'll take my time and hear you out for as long as it takes. In turn. Afterward, please apologize to those you've killed, as well as to that young man. 
I'm glad that Boreo doesn't actually say anything because I feel like, oh my god, no, wait. I okay. I was on two thoughts that just con just smashed in my head. One, I'm glad Boreo doesn't say anything because the voice would give it away, and that was what train wrecked me into. Yeah, yeah. Who's Lucas? Who's Lucas's voice? Daisuke Hirakawa. Who is Saint Germain and Code Realize? I'm just saying. They like to give him the sh he yeah, he's got like he's typecast a shady character. All I'm saying. All I'm saying is there are certain times where you're getting a Tome characters and you're like, I already know your character trope because your voice I'm just all right, now I'm really sus. I'm really sus right now of you being Lucas because you got Saint Germain is a stabby motherfucker. So like, I can't really say it's because you're light on Diabolic Lovers because everybody in Diabolic Lovers is a psychopath. So like, let's be real. Just because you voiced a character in Diabolic Lovers means nothing. But you know what I mean? You know what I mean? There's certain Atome like voice actors that have a trope. They're typecast. Nobuhi Gokomoto is usually like, well, you are the, you're sus as fuck. Usually because, well, it might not be a bad thing, but it's because he can do the cute, adorable voice and then the super sexy voice. So you play evil characters, but you also play those characters who have secret identities. You know what I mean? Where you're like, look, it's all, it's all cutesy. And then I'm all sexy. Or bad characters. So like, now I'm kind of like, so I'll say you too, like. And if we're playing, like, obviously we played Radiant Tail and he was in that. But it's because you had a secret identity. It wasn't a secret. Okay, it's not a secret. It's not like I'm spoiling my game. It's like, you're playing the cute little fluff ball who we're not supposed to know is a cute, is a hot dude. But obviously we know is a hot dude because it's the whole point of the game. You knew it from the very beginning. But it's like, that's why you had a secret identity from the main character for a while. Like, I mean, just, come on. Come on. That's why you did it. But still doesn't make you not sus when you're in other games, depending on the game. Radiant Dale, no one was sus because everything was fluffy, right? This game, everyone should be sus. So when you put a voice actor that usually plays kind of sussy characters, well, there you go. Now I'm more, I, that's a, like, it really should. It's really sad when you get to the point where you're like, it's the pose of the sprite that concern me, but it's also your voice actor that then is like, but that's also why I'm glad he doesn't say anything. Because if he said something, unless you're one of the voice actors that do, can do drastically different voices where no one would know, it's going to be obvious who you are. And sometimes we get used to, oh, I know their cutesy voice. I know their sexy voice. You know what I mean? So you can't really, you would know and that would ruin it. So I'm glad Boreo doesn't say anything or hasn't yet, you know? Honestly, for us, it's more fun because we don't get to hear the voice, so we would never know. But for people who are playing with voice acting on, I'm happy he doesn't say anything. Anyway, his kind words merely served as a signal that the battle was about to begin. Oh! Oh! We getting drama CG, guys. Drama CG. All right. And the music is so motherfucking intense and loud. Did my computer just turn up or did the vault? Okay, my computer went up, that's why. My computer went up to 50 and I was like, Jesus, I think it's as loud as it was before, but. The dry clanging of metal echoed through the quiet alleys. Woo! The long sword slashed, the rapier thrusted. Yet Boreo blocked and parried each blow, responding to them with a swipe of his halberd. I'm sorry, bird. Each weapon struck at a different range. Even Adolphe could tip the fight in their favor. If only they could get within range. I don't see... Oh, no, there's... Okay, Boreo's kind of behind, in between them, but in the background, it's just a hood, so you could barely tell. I mean, I guess it's also a swoop of his cloak. That was their plan, but they were unable to close the distance, thereby losing any possible advantage. We might go a little over because we're in this scene and it's intense, so we're going to go. We're not going to cut you off. Oh, sorry I said what I said earlier. This might be a little too much to handle. 
and was just about to say the same. Their light exchange helped to reduce the tension they felt from their struggle. The battle was two against one, yet it was even Adolfe who sustained repeated attacks on their shoulders and arms. This guy's just insane. There's no way a human can move like that. He's got just Jesus juice, I'm saying. Halberds were as heavy as they looked, and not considered swift weapons. In the hands of normal people, at least. Oreo was able to reposition himself immediately after each swing, when it would take anyone else a few seconds. He really is a monster. But, you see it, right, Eve? Of course. If he was actually serious, we'd already be lumps of meat by now. Despite his display of astounding prowess, the assailant was still holding back. The wounds they received, while deep enough to bleed, were not life-threatening. Wasn't this guy attacking Hugo earlier with the intent to kill? So why... I didn't have the time to think. Because Hugo is part of a rich family. Okay, right? Hugo and Matt... Hugo might have gotten kicked out from his house, but he's still part of a rich family. These two are just basically orphans. Okay, Hugo... I think still lives in Cheetah. Well, he's from Cheetahs. He might not live there anymore. But you know what I mean? And all the people that died in the alley could have been merchants or people from Cheetahs or whatever. That's, I think, the point where we're getting at. Like, yeah, they were murdered in Cohen, but it has nothing to do with that. It's rich people. You know what I mean? And nobody's talking about it. So you wonder if it's something. You're funding this research, which is against God. Because it's Lucas and he's like a little god boy. So I'm just saying he could be psycho like that. So, like, it's not I'm just killing random people. Like, if it were Cyan doing it, I'd be like, you're killing them because you want body parts for science for some reason. Don't know why. You have tons of science, but whatever. Lucas, it would be because them being relivers and going is going against the will of God and the will of God in this, like, country on this little island is death at 23. And you shouldn't be going against that. Especially if you believe, which he might in reincarnation, like you die and your soul's reborn, you're defying that, like, will of the universe or God or whatever by being reborn in your body, then your soul can't be free to be born into something else and you're fucking up nature, if that's what you believe. You know what I mean? I mean, we'll find out, but I'm like, that's just... That's where I'm, where I'm kind of figuring it might lead. Or something similar at this moment without knowing what anymore, but... Eve suddenly went tense, seeing Boreo lower his stance and pull his halberd to the side. Adolfe! Up or down! Which is it? Down! Got it. I trust your hunch more than mine. Oh, he's got blood on his face. The two jumped up immediately. And just like that, the halberd's deadly blade swiped at the air the two had just, where, the two, where the two had just stood. Oh, look at them all beat up. Her poor babies. They both gulped at the same time. It didn't seem like he wanted to kill them, but he was intent on incapacitating them. The two had lost too much blood and were already wounded beyond reason. In contrast, their opponent hadn't even broken his sweat and was still swinging his weapon as though it was nothing. You can't tell he's got a cloak on. We're going to lose. Just as those four words flashed through their minds... Found you. The Avenger arrived at the worst time. You won't get away. You won't get away. You're not getting away from me. Mathis, no longer a frightened boy, screamed as if his throat were being ripped open. That's how my voice feels to begin with, and then, like, making him scream. I'm like, that's gonna work. I won't let you get away this time. You know what you did to my brother. You killed him. Wait, Mathis! You're gonna feel all the pain you've inflicted. Die! That hurt, guys. Adolfe's words fell on deaf ears as Mathis threw his knife in a rage. The knife he had been sharpening for this very moment flew between Eve and Adolfe, straight toward its target. It must have been a mere reflex for the executioner. And see, then the top of the halberd has, like, the pointy thing, and that's what stabbed them through the heart. That's why it looked like multiple weapons. With a wave of his halberd, he deflected the knife back. It stabs Eve right in the heart. It was being sent back through the same path it came. Like, these guys... Okay, I'm sorry, you can't... I'm full-on 
I would be shocked if it's not Lucas because he got Jesus or some shit on his side. Because Anko is like the devil on his side. Like he's from Hades, so he's got hell on his side. But he's not the one doing this. So the only other magic fucking power you got going on in this world, aside from death, is Jesus. So like, I'm just saying, this is not skill. This is Jesus juice over here. Like, huh? The knife's menacing tip headed straight for Mathis. Just as it was about to strike Mathis' head, we jump in the way. Mathis! Yep. And we get another CG. Damn, this game is CG heavy in the in the common route. I'm kind of here for it. In the nick of time, Mathis' body was pushed down from behind and the deadly blade passed right above it. The one who saved Mathis from imminent death was... Death. The young woman known as Death. <laughs> I love that. And then we have the beautiful piano music. Mathis' frenzy for vengeance stopped at the sight of, the, of this unexpected visitor. Of his unexpected savior. Jesus, I can't read. Why, why are you here? I, I was worried because of my promise. Promise? Tracy knew immediately that she arrived at the best and worst possible time. She was pale and trembling, the knife having just brushed against her. The reason she intervened to stop Mathis was... You said it yourself before. Mathis, you asked us for help so that we could go after Boreo together. I mean, someone asked me for help was special to me. It meant more to me because of how important it was. I didn't want you to be killed in some lonely place because I couldn't be of any help to you. The madness and anger in Mathis's eyes slowly faded. In their place, something else was reflected... Strands of gold fluttered to the ground. I was wondering when it, the, it just brushed past us. I'm like, did it chop off a chunk of our hair? You could kind of tell in the CG that you're like, yes, it did. <laughs> and that's the strands of gold. We lost a little chunk of our hair. Tracy's golden hair lay scattered around them in the dark alley. The knife that flew overhead took her hair in place of Mathis's life. The shimmering of gold from the moonlight upon her fallen hair caught everyone's eye. Morio remained still at the sight. Yeah, because he didn't want to hurt me. Lucas likes me. I'm also curious about this book. Like, obviously the one where he's holding the halberd is not going to be present in any other sprite char character sprite because you don't have a weapon in your hand, you know? <laughs> Until Boreo's revealed as whoever. You know what I mean? But whoever he really is underneath that cape is going to have that same hand to the hippos and this same questioning pose. So, gotta remember these. The executioner backed away slowly. He quickly leapt up and kicked off from the alley walls, alley walls to make his way upward, melting into the darkness of the night sky. <sighs> Silence fell upon the alley. Because you see what I'm saying? Like, Eve kind of has that little hand behind your head pose, but it's different. It's very sassy, though. Released from the bloodied halberd, the two core members gently fell me first onto the ground. You ran away like a monster, too, climbing up walls like that's like that is something I've only read in books. We weren't able to nick him, let alone land a blow. I never knew someone so strong existed in this country. Adolphe, Eve, you're bleeding! And don't worry, it's not as bad as it looks. Well, we can patch ourselves up, so can you take care of Mathis instead? Okay. Good place, we'll end it here, because we're probably transitioning back to us. But, like, damn! I was actually, I'm not gonna lie, I'm like, I don't think Eve or anyone's gonna die here. You know what I mean? So this fight and the whatever, like, I knew one, but, like, I was a little, I'm not gonna lie, slightly concerned for Hugo. Because I'm like, I don't think they'd kill him this early. Like, I feel like he's, there's a chance he's going to die. He's a side character, so he's free game. But, like, it, there was definitely tension. You're like, oh, oh my God. Like, I know no one's going to die. Hugo might. Hugo might, and I'm a little concerned. But especially if Boreo seems to be, like they said, going after rich people. I feel like it has to do with people who are relivers. Maybe he's trying to kill people who were never relivers before to prevent them 
from becoming relivers because maybe if it's Lucas, right? Well, okay, let's just be real. Even if it's not, if it's someone else, the cross and the bead chain, well, the rosary looking chain the, with the cross or whatever kind of indicates you got, there's some religious aspect here, okay? And we already have kind of introduced that into the game with Lucas being like, good, like God fearing boy. And then you've got Anko who's like, no, I live in Hades and I'm the watcher of death. And like, that's you. So he's like the devil over here. And Lucas is like our little angel boy. Okay. Right. So we kind of already had that going on in the beginning. Like that's, that's not far. That's not breaching. That's, that was there. So you like relivers. Yeah. Even if you, okay. You go, you get your body backed up. You get your brain downloaded. You can only use that brain download once. So I go, I die. They bring me to the factory to reset me. The research institute, whatever factory, you know what I meant. Like, <laughs> and then that my brain download gets put in my new body. If I were to die by getting stabbed two seconds after I walked out the door, I can't come back. My brain's already in my body. Like, that's it. Like they said, one time use. But it doesn't seem, and we'll have to see. But I'm guessing that the people that Boreo's killing were never, because like Mathis said, my brother wasn't a reliver. He didn't have a body or a backup. Mathis doesn't. Hugo doesn't. And I'm wondering if Boreo's killing people who aren't because of that whole religious aspect. Like there's a thing about, like the thought process could be relivers are like a blight against God, kind of like, yeah, but Lucas is meanwhile teaching them about it. But he's teaching him. He's a teacher. I'm teaching you the facts. I'm just saying that's up to you to decide. But if you decide to become a reliver, I'm going to fucking stab you through the heart. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't have to add that as factual. You know what I mean? But, like, him just teaching it, I, I mean, I would like, if it was him, it would make, it'd be kind of interesting because, like, you meet him and he's like, I'm just teaching you the facts about the process and everything that goes on, blah, blah, blah. He's not putting his religious thoughts into it. He's not putting his thought process of like, it's up for everyone to decide for themselves. He's not like, you're a horrible sinner if you do, though. You know what I mean? But he could have that thought process. Like, the nature of our country is you die at 23. That's obviously the will of whatever God you believe in that rules this country or like, you know, whatever looks down upon us. So you being a reliver is going in the face of of that nature of God. So I'm going to stab you before you get to do that. And you wouldn't be killing relivers because there were already abominations. You'd only be killing the people who have never backed up or gone through the reliving process. You know what I mean? Or even backed themselves up like Mathis's brother. Mathis's brother could have backed himself up. He's never relived yet, but killing him would mean nothing because, oh, they'd be like, oh, we can clone him. It's cool. You know? So you're trying to kill people who have never backed themselves up yet to like, you know, and like why, I mean, obviously this has happened before, but we didn't know about it, but maybe like now he's turning to poorer districts because more people in Cohen are able to afford to do this where maybe they weren't before. So he's, you know what I mean? I don't know. That's my theory right now. So we'll see what happens, but interesting. I kind of like it because we got Anko who's like the watcher of death. He's over there coming up from hell being like, hey, girlfriend, let's be pals. Let's make a deal. And that's shady as shit. Zion's over here playing God, which is kind of cool. And then if Lucas is like, everyone should die that's thinking of doing this because it goes, then he's crazy. And it's like, sweet. I mean, to be fair, this game is dark and gritty and fucked up. So having a bunch of our love interests be like fucking wackadoodles crazy psychos is like all right i'm into it sounds like fun it's gonna make the dark even more fucked up so cool anyway i will see you guys next time remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more